So this is something that's quick and easy to do. Uh, it's just a, it's a set area. So just like we did with the, uh, the grazing stick in a tall, tall grass situation, it's something that you can set down and then you can slide it into the grass. And then you've got your nice defined area that's on there. So if you cut your pipes to size, you know exactly what size that is. You can measure the same size. Don't have to think about it. Any, any stem that's inside, you cut. Any stem that's outside, you leave. But you take every, uh, all stems uh, from the base, capture that, and throw it in the bucket, and weigh it. That's gonna be your wet, your wet weight bulk. So I'm gonna take that bulk, I'm gonna chop it up into small pieces, small, small enough that I can dry it quickly. Um, I have been drying in my food dehydrator. Another way to do it is with the microwave. But uh, a microwave, uh, the only heads up I give you is just that different cellular types can actually um, make things bounce and, uh, and can start on fire. So the grass will burn. Uh, the grass, different, different grasses can burn if you give them the, the, enough opportunity. So keep an eye on it. So put it in there, put a little bit of, of water. Uh, we'll go through this. I put a, it's recommended to put a little bit of water so there's always something evaporating. But then the grass is going to get zapped and it's going to dehydrate uh, quite quickly. So I just put a subsample in there. I, I like drying uh, 0.8 ounces. So I got my little food scale. I'll put point, I'll chop everything up after I have the bulk weight put 8.8 ounces on my plate, a little bit of water, zap it uh, for one minute. If the change has gone down because it's lost water, I'll put it back in, zap it, weigh it. If it, if it has stayed the same, then that means that the water is all gone. And now is this a stable weight. The idea is to figure out how much water is in there and how much uh, dry matter you have. Once you have those two things, then you can extrapolate from a small area to a large area. I will typically go with just a one square foot by a one square foot area. Nice and simple calculations uh, as well. So it gives me a nice sample size, but it's also nice on the math. Uh, because it's already grazed and there's not as much there, I wanna make sure that I do have enough that I can weigh and measure. I'm gonna cut and then collect everything above three inches. May have eaten two different heights, that's okay. What I'm trying to get a, uh, an estimate of is how much did they eat. So I'm going to cut everything to the same height, three inches over here, three inches over here, and then we'll be able to see, to compare, uh, assuming that these two areas were about the same height before, uh, before versus after, we'll be able to see how much, how much they ate over time. All right, I'm going to measure my 24. I'm going to simply just cut, I cut myself a quick line. I want everything within on the inside of this area. Because these plants are laying over, I'm going to scoot them back over onto their side. Anything that's on this side, I'm going to keep. All right, so now I've got a pretty good idea of what my area is. All right. So that gives me a pretty good visual. So that's going to give us some idea of what's, what's remaining in that area. So I like to use something that's light uh, and easy to ease it away on my little kitchen scale. Uh, I put it on there empty and then I can tear it so that it's reading zero. So now when I put material in there, uh, it's only going to weigh the material and it's not going to weigh the material and the bucket. All right, so I want to capture the, the, uh, the bulk weight of everything that we collected out here. So I'm going to put all the material that was collected in that specific area in the bucket. And I've got uh, 4.3 ounces. All right, bulk weight. That's going to be uh, critical. We want, to have, we want to have that bulk weight. Next, I want to take a subsample which just means that I want to chop everything up so it's relatively uniform. I don't want to be selective, meaning that I don't want to just collect the leaves. I don't want just stems. I don't want just flowers. I want to make sure that it's very representative of everything that's in there. So I'm going to try to chop everything up. For me, I'm just looking for small enough 
particle sizes that they're easy to manage. They don't flop around too much. They don't jump around. I'm gonna take out, mix it all up. Make sure that it's fairly uniform. All right, so now anything I put in here is just the weight of the plants. So we've got our, our bulk weight. Now we're gonna have our subsample wet. Uh, sub wet was 1.5 ounces. Uh, there are recommendations to put in just a little bit of water. Uh, doing it for short intervals, keeping an eye on it. Um, looking for any smoke. But we'll give it, uh, again, just a chance to drive off that moisture. Definitely use some caution. It does get hot. All right, I'm down to 1.3. All right, and so after one minute, we've lost not much. So we'll keep going. We'll keep it in there, keep trying to drive it off. So the idea is we can, when we can replicate that number, get the same, num the same dry weight each time, then we consider that dry. And then we'll take the percent dry, uh, we'll, we'll take the measurement to get the percent uh, between dry versus wet. Important to keep the subsample on there. But then we can take that percentage and we can apply that to the bulk. And once we have a percent moisture on the bulk, then we can take that one foot area and expand that to an acreage area. All right, so I've got the 0 0.6 again. All right, so I'm gonna take that as my, as my bottom weight and it, it is crispy. So we'll go with the 0 0.6. All right, so I've got uh, 0 0.6 ounces finished weight and I started out with 1.5 ounces subsample wet weight. So that gives me a 0.4, my answer is 0.4. Uh, so if we change that into percentages, that would be 40% is what's remaining. So that's gonna be the dry portion. So I'm gonna put uh, the common initials DM or dry matter that's on there. So if we have 40% dry matter, that means that we would have how much moisture? 60. Good, <laughs> yep, not hard math, right? So 60% moisture. All right, that's not too clear, but is that easy enough for now? Okay, so since I've run out of room, I'm gonna ask for, ask for your help on here. So if we have a, uh, a bulk wet weight of 4.4 ounces and 60% of that is water, meaning 40% of it is the dry matter. If we could take 4.4 times 0 0.4, 40%, uh, what does that give us for an answer? We'll call it 1.7 uh, dry matter. Sorry. So we had 4.4 that we took out of the field. If we account for uh, just the grass, not the water, we would have the equivalent of 1.7 ounces uh, from that bucket that we removed from the square. All right, and that square that I removed, that was two feet, two square foot. But if we know that one acre is bigger than two square foot, how big is an acre? So 43,560. Uh, square feet in an acre. So if we had two feet, that would means we would need to divide 43,560 by two, which gives us what? And then multiply that times the 1.7. Sorry for that. Yes, we got to keep the got to keep the units the same. So if we're talking uh, pounds per acre. Uh, there is that very, very important little point right there. So convert the, uh, the ounces to pounds, 16 ounces in a pound. All right. Okay. Uh, so I was going to do the same process, uh, but for the tall grass, um, you're welcome to stay, but please don't feel it. You have to, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that for Jen because I'd like to, and, uh, because I'm curious too. So we'll do that real quick. Can I ask you a question? Yes, please. Can you apply the same percentage wet? Oh, that's a great question. Um, It'd be a lot easier, right? Yeah, and and you're right. In reality, um, 
probably not going to be too much different. Um, the, uh, the former scientist in me would say that I would want to do it just because... because it's taller, it has more capacity for water. Well, um, yes, there, there could be different uh, stem maturities, uh, but there could also be different plant communities. Uh, so if there's more okay. clover, for example. Um, but you make a very good point. So especially on something like this where it's a matter of a few feet apart, uh, it's probably not going to be too much different.